night. I see you, baby. We got them pics coming, baby. Don't go nowhere, fam. And I hope that wasn't your hand, man. I hope that was some Halloween shit. I hope, because that hand didn't look good, bro. Morning Silver, I see you, baby. Carl New Spellman. You gave me that pass when I hit that game winner, baby. It's all up here, dog. I know you remember. Let's get this room filled up, man. Another show coming up, man. More rawness for y'all, man. Y'all know how I do. I keep them in store, man. I ain't playing with this shit. I been told y'all that shit. Games is over, man. Yes, sir. All right, let me shut that off real quick. The room's starting to fill up. Let me give my shout-outs like I do. Oh, man, sugar, that was your hand? God bless it, man. I hope it get better. That shit did not look good. Steve Levine, Ernest Vega, I see y'all. Ernesto Lewis, I see y'all. This is the shout-out moment before I get going, man. I'm going to give y'all a few minutes, man. We got a lot of shit in store today. I hope you got your questions ready. And let me know, guys, if I sound clear or not. Humpty, what up? Matter of fact, you ain't got to let me know. I got Humpty, man. Humpty, how we looking and sounding, my big brother? Yes, sir. Ernesto Lewis, big slam. I see you, baby. I see you looking like Vin Diesel and shit. Okay, Ernest, thank you, sir. Yeah, this the highlight moment. Halloween makeup, thank God. Um, sure, could that hair look real bad, man? That was a bad way to go into the weekend. God damn, that hair looked bad. God bless you, man. I'm just happy that everything's good. All right, I hope we good to go. Um, we gonna get this show started real good, real good. Okay, got everything clear. That's what I love to see. Ben Velasquez, Steve Levine. Yo, I love all of y'all, man. I can't tell you. How much I appreciate you guys, man. Because y'all gave me the ability and the strength to keep doing this shit. Because five years of this, man, I don't ran out of gas a long time ago, man. A long, 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 long time ago I don't ran out of gas. But y'all gave me the ability to keep going. And I'm going to keep giving y'all nothing but the raw truth to help you guard, man. You know how I get down. All right, let's start real quick. Let me take off the shades. Looking like Samuel Jackson and shit. All right, credit fix, y'all. Matter of fact, before we even do that, shout out to the East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, Las Vegas, New York City, LES to the Deaf, Triple H Everything, Syndicate Radio TV, D Beeman. Yo, D Beeman, I keep telling y'all, go to my page, the Al York Sports Group. D Beeman fights November 21st. Buy tickets, y'all. My man is showing out, man. The games are over. I keep telling y'all, this pandemic shit got all of us choked out. Ain't no more room for games, man. Everything is business, man. That's real talk, man. And let me go to other stuff. Uh, credit fix. Never too late to get your credit fix. IG me. Inbox me. Email me at al.newyorkeryahoo.com. Now, the next thing I'm going to tell you, I want you to pay attention real carefully. My boy named Juice. The kid is, yo, when I tell you the kid's official with it, I need y'all to try him. Uh, go to the website, rightsidesyndicate.com. He's going to post up the link for you guys. Once the link is up, y'all just go into it. He gives out free picks. He works any deals that you want, and he works every day. Like me and my show, we get three picks a week. No, this guy, this guy to feed you all day, every day. He'll work the prices with you. And this is the big thing that I like what he's doing. This is why I took on this advertisement. This part right here. He's giving you a guarantee winner. Let me explain what that means. I know what y'all think it mean. All these bullshit handicappers. Oh, I got a guarantee winner. It loses. They don't call you back. They don't answer their phone. They get lost. They hit for the hills. My man, you go on his website, you subscribe. As long as you show him the ticket, just show him whatever ticket you put. If it loses, the pick he gives you He's going to reimburse you for your money. Where you going to get that at? Tell me where the fuck you going to get that at. And I'm not talking about Covers.com $15 bets. This guy will take you up to $500. If it loses, you get your money back. So it's a win-win situation. Hit him up. Uh, let me get the website for you again real quick. Where did I put it at? Right side, uh, Rightsidesyndicate.com. Juice. Hit him up, get your free pick, 
Do what the hell you got to do. I'm putting y'all on to the connect. Don't say I ain't give y'all no plugs. Because I'm giving y'all a plug right now. All right, let's keep it moving, man. Because you know how I do. I start to get a little crazy with it, man. Let's go into sports real quick. Salute to the L.A. Dodgers. And, guys, we're going to have all the questions. I'm going to answer as much as I could. Shout out to Paris. Shout out to Holly. Uh, Big Ben again. Uh, hold up. Yeah, Ben, that's the beauty about what my man's doing. He's changing the game. If you lose the bet, long as you show him your ticket. And let me tell you, if he don't reimburse you, you notify me in this fucking big mouth I'm running, I'm going to put him on blast. Nah, we, we ain't doing no counterfeit shit on my show. But he official, so I'm not even worrying about it. I know he's a man of his word, but I'm giving y'all the backup where if he doesn't pay y'all back, let me know, and that's it. Off with the guns, baby. Okay, back to the Dodgers. They haven't won since 1988. Uh, when they beat the Oakland Athletic with the Bash Brothers. Bash Brothers with that magical home run by Kirk Gibson of Dennis Eckersley. To me, one of the biggest home runs in World Series ever for multiple reasons. I mean, I could get into Eckersley being the best closer. Uh, had one of his best years to Kirk Gibson playing like, I think one leg was, I mean, he couldn't even run. I mean, he literally couldn't even run. And he had that big home run to beat the Oakland Athletics. And that's the t last time the Dodgers won the World Series in 1988. And of course, in 81 when they beat my Yankees. But I don't even want to get into that. Um... Last time they made it to the World Series, uh, the, after that, they won in 2017. They lost to the Chief Strolls. Y'all know everything about that. Then they played Mookie Betts and them in 2018. Lost in five games, which I thought they were the better team, but they just didn't show up to that World Series. And, of course, this great World Series with the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, who's getting all the credit they deserve, even though Cash fucked up late. He managed great all season, using them numbers, you know, all that little computer stuff. But he overthought it when he took out Blake Snell with 73 pitches. And I'm not going to say that cost them the series. That cost them going into game seven. Because I thought the Dodgers were ready game seven. They had Walker Bueller ready. Kershaw could have came in. And if Urias did not come in that game... He could have definitely came in um, game seven. So the Dodgers was ready to go game seven. I thought they were going to finish him game seven, but instead they finished them game six. Okay, Steve Levine. Okay, I'm starting to get some questions. Ben said, awesome home run indeed. Uh, what a great moment, Mr. October. Don't compare. Um, okay, Reggie Jackson did hit three home runs. So I'm going to give you that, Steve. I'm going to give you that on three consecutive pitches. Let me, let me elaborate. Three consecutive pitches. But Kirk Gibson, if you ask Humpty, because Humpty will tell you, he was crippled that game. He was crippled. He could not run. He could not even pick his arm up, they said. Hit that big home run off Eckersley. So you can put those together, but of course, you got to go with the three straight pitches. But Eckersley home run was more important than Reggie's all three home runs because he did that late in the game. Okay, so let me move on real quick. Randy or Rosarina. Wow, I don't even know where to start with this kid, bro. This kid took it to new, to new heights, man. I didn't even know this kid. I had my boy Charles Codero educate me on this kid. And from my understanding, the St. Louis Cardinals traded a Rosarina for prospect Matthew Labrador and catching prospect Edgardo Rodriguez. And let me tell you something. A Rosarina would have been so great in that St. Louis um, outfield and probably leading off or batting third. Just imagine a Rosarina with the Cardinals. Cardinals, I don't know how they sleeping. I'm not saying they should fire that general manager. But something's got to give because how do you not know this guy was talented? Now, nobody knew he was going to put these numbers up, breaking that record of home runs, of 10 home runs for the postseason, uh, 28 hits. He broke uh, Pablo Sandoval's record. 
Nobody's seen that coming. But Jesus, you ain't see that this kid was a 5-2 player? You couldn't see that? I mean, Kevin Cash named him the Cuban uh, Mookie Betts before even the postseason. So obviously he has some type of talent. And right now we're not going to call him that. I got my own name for Rose Arena. We're going to call him the Cuban Assassin. He don't need to be called after another major league player, which was, you know, it was something he appreciated before the postseason. But when you outdo the guy they calling you, oh, you don't need to be junior no more. You got your own motherfucking name, and this name is the Cuban Assassin of Rose Arena. I mean, God bless to this dude, and hopefully he could continue to do work, especially in the American League with the Rays, who really need him because he seemed like the only bat, especially in the World Series. Because Joy Man's true um, bat went down, Adama's bat went down, Weddle's bat went down, King of Myers bat went down, and the kid continued to fucking rake. Other news. I'm sweating a little bit. Let me take some questions. Let me back down. Hold up, guys. I'm going to get to y'all right now. Okay, superb changing the game. Let me see what we got here. Um... Yeah, Kurt was limping, bro. I'm telling you, he was hurt. Give me some questions, guys. Look at Humpty said, only I batted in the World Series. So now that even brings it a little high to Reggie's three home runs on three pitches. Because it's hard to defeat that. I mean, nobody in their mother's ever going to do that again. You, the best you could do is tie Reggie. Because you can only hit the max three home runs on three pitches. And boy, did he. I mean, when he took Huff, Deep on that last one, he put that shit up in the black seats. Nobody puts him in the black seats, dog. All right, let's keep going, man. Okay, Ben, I appreciate you like that. Uh, Humpty said St. Louis gave him, didn't know how to use him and bring him up. Humpty, obviously something went wrong there. And one thing about the Tampa Bay Rays that I'm going to explain to you guys, they might be a team that don't got money. They always, every time it's time to really pay somebody, they have to let them go because they can't afford the big guys that want the big money. But what they were able to do during the years of acknowledging that the money was low, they able to produce and find the young talent like nobody else. The Tampa Bay Rays are the best in like, just taking a young guy and whatever they put him through, I mean, from the David Prices of the world, um, Evan Longoria, I could keep going. I mean, um, what's that, uh, what's his name? Big Game James. I mean, from Big Game James, all these guys, bro, they continue to bring up and then they know exactly when to let them go. When, it's, when they ask for the money, they let them go and these guys never shine nowhere else, man. Do the math. They never shine nowhere else. I'm trying to think of that lefty hitter that the Boston Red Sox gave him. That he looked like Method Man. I can't get his name right now. Humpty, can you get his name? Um, the oh Kyle Crawford. Kyle Crawford was a beast with the Rays. Soon as Boston gave him that hundred mil, he was hurt the majority of the contract. They traded him to L.A. He did absolutely nothing. So that's one thing that the Rays mastered is nurturing talent all the way through the farm system and knowing when to let you go. But unfortunately, they don't got the money to keep people. Uh, yeah, you're right, um, Carmona, they do. I'm, I'm, uh, my boy, I think it was uh, Juice that said that Kershaw and Mookie Betts, listen to me carefully, Kershaw and Mookie Betts make the same money as the whole Tampa Bay Rays team. Just think about that. Think about that. You got 30 guys. They had 30 guys on the roster, something like that. Two guys, Kershaw and Betts, make as much money as the whole Rays team. That shit's fucking bananas, bro. Okay, uh, we got some more here. Yeah, also the Kansas City Royals. You know, they also kind of know how to nurture talent up the farm system. Also, good point, Humpty. Uh, we got Ben here. 
Oh, oh, that home run in the Astrodome, Ben, was incredible, but it wasn't the World Series. It was a playoff game. So we're talking World Series home runs, but yes, that was an incredible home run. It was. Ernest Vega. Nobody big time wants to. Yeah, Ernest, that's the point I'm trying to make. They're not going to get no more key free agents. Only free agents the Tampa Bay Rays are going to get are guys that want to win and are willing to take the minimum. You're not getting paid in Tampa. Just like you're not getting paid in New England, though Belichick did pay Revis one year and Gilmore. He did really, um, I mean, he didn't pay them. He talked crap into paying them. But they kind of like New England where they're not going to pay you, man. They want to win. Everybody's got to take less. Get in for the team and win. That's the mindset they got. What else we got here? Martin Silver. Oh, wow. That's uh, that's news to me, Martin. Um, I didn't know they declined Charlie Martin. Um, I like Charlie Martin. He actually, let me tell you a story about Charlie Martin in case you guys didn't know. He was a mess. He was coming up, he was a mess. The late Roy Holiday took him under the wing. And if you go to YouTube and you watch Roy Holiday's windup, Charlie Morton took it exactly. I mean, he looked exact like a replica of Roy Holiday when they played when when he when they played together with the Phillies and when he went with the Pirates. But then he switched it up a little bit with the Astros and with the Rays. But he still got a lot of Roy Holiday in his windup. But he thanked Roy Holiday for changing his whole life. And you see, Charlie Martin is big time. So I hope the Yankees go get him. That's good news, Martin, because we don't have to go against them, and hopefully the Yankees can pick him up. Let's keep going, guys. Uh, Tampa ain't um, paying, but, <laughs> but Ben Velasquez is basically saying it's lovely in Palm Beach. That's why they're not paying people because they got women over there and they got the palm trees and all that. That's a great point. But um, let me see what else I can get to, guys. But, you know, I know you guys are asking me questions. I know I got some more stuff over here. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, okay, let me go with the Yankees real quick. Let me throw something out there before y'all continue to ask me questions. The Yankees picked up the option of Zach Britton which I think that's that's good. I like Britton, the lefty, you know, the lefty in the bullpen. He's not a closer no more. He's a good eighth inning, seventh inning pitcher. We need the dominant lefty. That was a great pickup. And I also told y'all we were done with Brett Gardner. They didn't sign the option on Brett. Now, what can happen if Brett is willing to take a lot less because he was getting $10 million a pop, which we no way in the world we're going to give that to Gardy. No way in the world. Maybe if Gardy settles for like three, four million, we could bring him back. But I think it's time to up and up the floodgates for Clint Frazier. You know, take off the training wheels and put Clint Frazier out there because the boy got raw talent. You give Clint Frazier a whole baseball season, he's going to hit at least 270, 25 to 30 home runs, 80 to 90 RBIs. That's what Clint Frazier could provide in that awesome lineup. I'm telling y'all right now. Okay, let's see what else you guys got here. Um, Humpty said, Joe Carter. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, that was huge, Humpty. That was actually to win a game. A uh, great point. That's definitely right there. That's got to be either 2 or 1. But Reggie's and Kirk Gibson's got to be top 5. But the fact that Joe Carter was a walk-off, I'm not going to argue with you, Hump. I'm not, I'm not going to argue with you. That's a walk-off. So great point there. This is why I like your asking questions because I don't know everything. I know a lot, but I don't know everything. So whatever I miss, you guys bring it up, and it's all love, baby. Great point, Humpty. Let me go on here. Uh, let me see what uh, Carmona got. Yeah, great point, Carmona. Uh, Voight. It's another guy that the Cardinals let go. The Cardinals are on the road right now. Let me let me just put it out there. They missed in Terp Luke's uh Luke's voice uh talent and, and Randy Rose Arena. You can't strike out twice like that, bro. 
Foy was basically the MVP in American League, or damn near close to it. Now, I don't think he's going to come back like that every year. I think he just had a big year. I think he's basically a little better than a mediocre player, but he's got power, and I love to platoon him at first. But if he's able to play every day and, 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 and be able to keep these numbers flowing, oh, then you got to put him every day. But I just think short season, he snuck up on everybody. But with the longest season, everybody's going to know how to pitch him. They're going to look at the video, and they're going to learn how to get Guys, rookie, do not call me. There's no phone calls, rookie. No phone calls. All messages. Rookie, message me, because if I don't tell you twice, you're going to continue. This guy don't listen, man. No call, rookie. Don't call. Okay, what else we got here? Um... Uncle Ronald, I see you, baby. I see you, Uncle Ronald. Okay, Humpty said LeMayhew needs to be picked up. Voight is staying. Uh, LeMayhew, let me tell you something, man. Like I told you the last time, he hit great in Colorado. For some reason, you know, the thin air, everybody seems to up their average in Colorado. You know, but um, LeMayhew did something that I was very impressed he actually hit better out of Colorado. How many guys, I mean, how many guys can you say that? And and it always doesn't mean you're going to hit better in Colorado because look at Daniel Murphy, who tore it up with the New York Mets, did all right with the Nationals, but he's barely hitting anything in Colorado. If I'm correct, maybe like 270, 280. I mean, Murphy was hitting over three with the Mets and had that amazing playoff. But back to LeMayhew. Uh, great pickup, one of the greatest pickups we had in a long time. I knew he was a decent player, but I didn't know he was all-star caliber and could lead the league in hitting. Let's keep it going, guys. Uh, Romano said, uh, uh, voice of baby Giambi. Um, I can see where you're going there, but Giambi was on steroids, so that's where it kind of messes me up at. Unless you're saying voice on steroids, then I could really see what you're saying. But I got you, bro. Okay, David Morales, what's up, baby? Okay, uh, Ben said Cardinals got bad scouts and bad management. Well, I'm not going to go as far as bad scouts because they bring a lot of good young blood through, the, through that farm system. I just don't know how they struck out twice like this. I mean, how do you strike out with an Rose Arena? I could see... If you gave up a Rose Arena and maybe you picked up a Shane Bieber, like in some type of trade, or maybe picked up maybe a Grinky and like a Bregman, something in that matter, but to lose a Rose Arena to these prospects that probably will never be nobody, it's a shame. It's a shame. You can't strike out like that. You got to get fired for shit like that. Okay, uh, Felix Chicino finally in the building. Let's go. Uh, J.D. won the battle title in Colorado, but I'm telling you right now, he's hitting better with the Yankees. Look at the numbers. I mean, everything's gotten better. So the guy's a good hitter, bottom line, no matter where he bats at. Okay, guys, let me go into other news real quick. My Dallas Cowboys. Oh, baby. Where do I go with this? Does anybody know a Ben DiNucci by any chance? Ben DiNucci. One thing I can't say, if y'all know me, y'all know I did my homework. I was all on YouTube this morning watching all his games. And uh, James Madison, he played for the James Madison Dukes. He was a seventh round, 231st pick overall. One thing I can't say, though, y'all going to think I'm crazy when I say this. He might give us a better chance to beat the Eagles than Andy Dalton. I'm explaining to you why. This kid got escape ability, and he can't throw the ball. What I don't know is when they put some hands on him, if he's going to hang in the pocket or he's going to be throwing it in the air like Eli used to do in his first couple years, some, some pop-up shit for anybody can intercept it. Danucci got legs. I mean, I really watch these videos. The guy can move left to right really good. He's got arm strength. But I am not going to say he's going to go into um, Eagle Stadium and beat the Eagles. Not no way, no how. But I will say 
I think he might give us a better chance to beat him than Andy Dalton because Dalton got no scrambling ability. And I don't know, he Dalton looks like he 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 don't even know the offense. Like that's what he looked like out there. You know how many times he overthrew people, threw the ball left when he was supposed to throw it right? Like the Cowboys on disarray. That's my team, and we are fucking horrible. I'm telling y'all right in your face on my fucking show because I keep it gully like that. We are fucking horrible, man. We need a win like this. A win like this might get us back in the map, but I don't see it happening. Okay, let's go to other news. Um, I need y'all. I need you guys to tell me what y'all think. Two attacks from the Miami Dolphins, the rookie from Alabama, I don't like the decision from the brass, from the Miami brass, to put him in while they three and three, one game behind the Buffalo Bills, you know, to take the lead in that division. And Ryan Fitzpatrick, I'm not saying that he's been playing outstanding, but he's definitely been playing really good, knows the offense, knows what, you know, what they feel and not feeling, got a good feel for the team. I think Fitzpatrick gives them the best opportunity to make the playoffs, and then you pull off this stunt. I understand he's your whatever number fifth pick, number fourth pick. It doesn't mean you got to put him right in. I mean, Pat Mahomes sat out a whole year. And not only that, why would you put a guy in that, uh, that had a big fracture who fractured the side of his shit? I don't know exactly what part of his body. I think it was his hip. Why would you put him against Aaron Donald? If you was going to put him in, you, you know, put him in against like the Giants or the, the Cowboys, like a team with a weak defense. You don't put him in with the best defensive player in the NFL. Do you guys know how deadly Aaron, um, Aaron Donald is? Do you guys even know that when he sacked Alex Smith, he jumped on Alex Smith's back knowing that the guy laying is 50%. Aaron Donald would put you out your misery in a heartbeat. This is a, even if they, listen, even if Miami wins the game, it's a bad decision to me. You leave Fish Magic in there and you keep rolling with the punches. And then if he fails or he gets hurt, then you bring in the young boy. You don't bring the young boy in this spot. Terrible, terrible decision by the Miami Dolphins brass. I'm totally against it. Okay, let's see what else we got here, guys. Okay, uh, Humpty said that uh, Sanchez is going to get traded from the Yankees and Austin Wells might be called up a uh, catching prospect for the Yankees. Well, I'm telling you now, I hate to say it. I know Noah Parker definitely disagrees with it. Noah Parker feels that um, that the Yankees should keep Sanchez. They, they think He thinks he's sh stupid by thinking like that. But he turned everybody off. I mean, when you got pass balls in these huge games... And, you know, let me tell you something about a catcher. People think those catchers are putting numbers up that that's good money. That's not good money. It's how you run this rotation. You got to run your rotation. That's what makes Yadier Molina to me top three ever. I mean, I don't mean to disrespect the old guys, Humpty, like the Yogi Bears in them. I didn't watch them play, huh? I'm talking about the guys that I visualize from the Tony Peñas of the game, the Benito Santiago's of the game, from the Ted Simmons of the games. You understand what I'm saying? From the, um, what's this guy's name? I can't believe I can't remember his name, man. Anyway, there's one guy I can't remember, but what I'm saying is the guy, Yadier Molina, is the best ever to me. But I'm going to say top three. Because he maintains, he maintains the rotation. Everybody loves throwing a Molina. He knows where to spot the ball. He, he, he studies each hitter. He knows exactly where to pump, go outside. Sanchez don't do none of that, man. Sanchez is fucking horrible. He does not help our pitchers in no way. And it's bad enough that you're not calling a good game. And then you got pass balls on top of that? And then you think he in a home run, he over there, it's going to make it up? He needs to become a full-time DH. 
If he can become a full-time DH, and the Yankees ain't going to really need him for that because we got guys we platoon with the outfield and DH, like the John Collins of the world, you know, the um, the, um big boy, you know, big boy in right field, you know what I'm saying? Uh, stand up, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we got all rise. We got people that void another guy that could go to DH. We're not just going to put him to DH, so he's going to obviously get traded and then have to take his luck elsewhere. Okay, guys, uh, what else you guys got? You guys are working me, man. You guys are working me. Aaron Judge. Shit, I can't believe I forgot his last name. It get like that when you got a million things on your mind. Big O, I see you, baby. That's my man, Big O. Let's keep it going. Yeah, uh, Yvonne Rodriguez, Pudge. I mean, you all talk to go to Carlton, Fitz, Humpty. I like Carlton Fist, another great catcher that I visualize. I'm only going to guys that I visualize, not the guys that I didn't. Like the Yogi Bears and them, I'm not going there. Okay, what else we got here? Uh, my boy O said, I hate the Cardinals, buddy. But you're right, Molina's the best catcher out there right now. I'm telling you, man, Yadi is a fucking animal. And, you know, the fact that he's the youngest, if I'm correct, out of three brothers, I mean, they might have one underneath him. I'm not sure, but I know he got two on top of him. I mean, the fact that he learned from those two brothers, and both of those guys can catch also, but they can't hit like Yadier. That's what made Yadier great. The motherfucker can rake too. Let's see what else we got here. Yeah, Pudge Rodriguez, man. The thing with Pudge, Humpty... I'm surprised you're bringing him up. He got that start, that steroid tag on him. And I don't care if you tell me they never proved it. I mean, I got lost like 100 pounds in like six months. And, and he lost that shit when they were pressing that steroid error. So I got my doubts on Pudge, man. I got I got my doubts on him on Ivan Rodriguez. I seen him drop like, whoo, that's like that. And if you tell me, that's because he got off the steroids. Okay, let's keep it going, guys. Any more questions? Okay, let me go. Um, How much time we got? We got a half an hour left. Uh, remind me, guys, if I forget to give y'all the free play at the end of the show, I will give it to y'all. We got two big games this weekend that I want to touch on real quick. The first game is the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Baltimore Ravens. Must watch. Um, Lamar Jackson's got the show out this time. Last real big game he had, he laid an egg against the Kansas City Chiefs on Monday night at home. He's got a great chance this week to redeem himself against a better defense, which I don't know how he's going to do that. But the Steelers are coming, man, and they're coming hard. They're 6-0. and I told y'all they for real. Though I think in this matchup, I think this game is a lot more important for Baltimore for multiple reasons. One, they one game behind. Two, they get the home game first. They play them twice. You want to win the home games in this series. This is divisional games. So if the Ravens can win this game, not only do they tie the Steelers, they get the first win and they get the home, you know, the home, the home win. Because they're going to have to travel to Pittsburgh the next time they play. So the line is three and a half, four and a half for the Ravens. I think the line's a little steep. I think this line should be two. Two and a half. I mean, how can you do anything else against the Steelers? I mean, you see, they gave them plus one and a half against the Titans, and they whooped on them boys, though the Titans came back late. But that's because the Steelers took the pedal. They took their foot off the pedal. If not, they, they could have ran all through the Titans if they wanted to. But I think this game here, if I had a gun in my head, I'm not touching this game. I think the Ravens win, but I don't know if they cover the four and a half, but I think they win. When it's all said and done, I think the Ravens win this game. Okay, what else you guys got? Let me see. Lost Ben said lost the weight. Uh, Steve Levine, remember um, Zach Quillen? He was a great for the. Okay, but Steve, like I said, I'm only mentioning guys that I've seen. So that Zach Quillen, I definitely didn't see him. True baseball fan. Okay. Yeah, Carmona, that's four and a half is steep. Gun in my head, you got to take Pittsburgh with the points. But I think the Ravens win. I think it's just too much of a must win. And Lamar has to show out 
We all seen that Monday night debacle that, that I mean, they, they made Lamar look super, superhuman, the KC Chiefs. And if you ask me, their defense ain't nothing compared to Steelers' defense. Steelers, yo, terrible towels is in, man. They balling, man. Let me see what else you got here. Uh, great matchup, yeah. Humpty Rider, George Michael, Sports Machine. Yeah, yeah, uh, Sports Machine, George Michael. I got a story for y'all. The reason why I really love that, if you remember, as soon as he starts the show, he got Julius Irvin cuffing the ball and throwing it on my boy Michael Cooper. I mean, that was, that was beautiful. I actually watched that game, and that was actually my best play of that series when the Sixers beat the Lakers in the chip. Great point, y'all. Okay, another intriguing game for this Sunday. Um, you got, let me see where I put that at. Give me a minute, guys. Uh, there's, there's another real good game. I got so much junk here, man. Where the fuck did I put that game at, man? Well, I mean, a game is going to be fun to watch. It's going to be Miami and the Rams because we're all interested to see how the young boy does against the Rams. So that's going to be a hard-fought game, but that's not the game I had in mind. Let me see if I can find it, but that's also going to be a real good game to watch and to see what two is made of. But I really wish that he put Tua in this spot. He doesn't need to be in this spot. Like I said, they, this is a tough task for the young boy who just getting over that hip injury. I mean, this is stupid because if he hurts himself again, you got to fire whoever gave the green light to let him play. And that's real talk there. But um, let me see the other intriguing game. Where did I put it at, man? Well, anyway, I can't find the other game right now. But let's go to something else real quick. Um, first of all, you got any questions? I'm going to go into the free picks. Tell me if you guys got any questions before we get into the free picks. I got Noah Parker's picks and my picks. Uh, Reverend 31st and passing Steelers defense. Middle. Okay, Phyllis Jacino, the big Steeler fan. So you know he's going to bring all these facts out. He's saying the Ravens are 31 in the passing game. Stealing defense plays the run. Plays and uh, stop the ball, anything through the middle. Well, another thing the Steelers are going to do, they're going to put a spy on Lamar Jackson. You already know that. He's going to have a spy on him the whole game. And I'm telling you, if the Steelers can get pressure up front and they can put pressure where they force Lamar to stay in the pocket with that spy, this might be an easy game, man. I'm telling you, it might be easy game, but it's not going to be easy to do that because Lamar's so quick. I mean, if they get good blocks, he can get around each corner just like that. If the receiver make a key block or a tight end chips the defensive end, he can get to the corners. But if the Steelers find a way, Mike Tomlin defense finds a way to keep him up the middle and make him actually throw the ball, I think the Steelers win, man. But I just think, I think they're going to be able to run the ball. I just see that, you know, this is a real big game for them. They really have to win this game, uh, the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, they don't want to get two games behind, lose two, you know, to two real good opponents, and they have to go at Pittsburgh. That'll be a real bad luck. Let me give y'all more news real quick. Um, 76 years old, Tony La Russa is back in baseball. Wow. Hall of Famer, has no reason to come back to the game, took the White Sox opening job. Uh, La Russa... Uh, Managed 5,100 games. He's 27 and uh, 2,728 wins, 2,365 losses. His winning percentage is not good at all. It's only 53%. But while May LaBouche is great, he's got three World Series uh, wins, six pennants, and four time manager of the year. Um, if he's got anything in his tank, he'll be really good for them young, real young Chicago White Sox who are really up and coming. So this might be a decent fit for Tony La Russa. It really might be. And another news, the Utah Jazz, the Millers who ran the Jazz for three decades, sold their organization to Ryan Smith for $1.66 billion. Wow, it's ironic how franchise are being sold. Like, I remember when George Steinbrenner bought the Yankees for $10 million. Now, I know that was prehistoric, but shit, $10 million. You got a team like the Utah Jazz who, at best, are mediocre. 
And they just sold they shit for $1.66 billion. Shit is crazy, man. Okay, now we got 20 minutes. I'm going to take some more questions. Then we're going to go to the free pick segment. Uh, Humpty said Ravens defense out of this well. But I have to take Pittsburgh. It's going to be a low-scoring game, 17-10 Pittsburgh. That's a possibility, Humpty. But if the Ravens could run the boards, you know, A-gap, B-gap, and Lamar could get outside, this could be something like 31-24. But if Pittsburgh contains them and keeps them inside, I think the Ravens' defense is going to definitely keep Steelers low. I think they... This is a playoff game for the Ravens. I hate to say it. I know it's early. A lot of y'all might be out. How is a playoff game? They only, they five and one. They got multiple games left. This is an undercover playoff game for the Baltimore Ravens for multiple reasons. And not to mention how much they hate the Pittsburgh Steelers and vice versa. Okay, let me see what else you guys got here. Ravens have only scored two touchdowns, uh, two wide receivers in the league. Jackson can't throw down fair. Okay, I'll give you that, Felix. Um, let me see what Ben got. Easy game. Wow, okay, OG. Uh, okay, uh, let me see. Martin Silva, does Dallas make a trade for a QB? Well, Martin Silva, I was hoping that we spoke to the Dolphins since they were going to bench Ryan Fitzpatrick. I was hoping that Jerry Jones made a phone call to the Miami Brass and talked about Fitzpatrick because a few shows ago when I told y'all that Fitzpatrick is the smartest quarterback in the NFL, I wasn't saying that he's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. What I'm just saying, nobody studies a playbook better than Ryan Fitzpatrick. If I'm, if I'm correct, I think he went to Yale or some shit like that. Harvard or Yale, either or. And you know them boys that come out them schools are like extra intelligent. I ain't even got to break that down to y'all. So that's where I'm saying that Fitzpatrick is smart. So saying that, him going to the Cowboys and that shitty-ass playbook that they got, he'll learn that shit in a week. So we could have put him in a game right now against the Eagles. I don't know if Jerry made the call or I don't know if Miami just wasn't interested because they want Fitzpatrick to basically teach to him. But either way, we should have went after him hard, and I don't think we did because I heard nothing about it. Let me see what else we got, guys. Guys, ask your questions, man. I'm here for y'all. Okay, Ben said, what do you think about LeBron going after Tristan Thompson? I heard nothing of the news, but if you're saying it happened, I'm going to roll with the fact that it did happen. Tristan Thompson is nothing but a mediocre player. I mean, he had a great series. He played a series of his life that got him $86 million. Ever since, he's been nothing beyond mediocre. So that means absolutely nothing, Ben, nothing. He, he got no game. He got no post-up game. He can't shoot from outside. He can rebound and occasionally block a shot or two. But if you think the Laker Brass is going to pay him what Cleveland paid him, it's not happening, bro. Okay, what else we got here? Phila Giacino said Ravens ain't running. Oh, that might be a possibility. Humpty saying, what's your thoughts on Tiger side of AJ Hitch? Great point, huh? Great point. I seen that. I seen that. Okay, if you look at the intangibles, meaning what does AJ Hinch bring to the Tigers? I think it's a beautiful pickup. Beautiful pickup. A.J. Hinch, to me, can manage. What's going to hurt A.J. Hinch is the fact they cheated. So no matter where he goes, he's going to carry around that cheat collar straight up and down. And the, the Tigers are so bad of an organization since the days of Alan Trammell, Lou Whitaker, Willie Hernandez. Y'all already know Frank Tanan and all of Lance Parrish, whatever, Larry Parrish. They've been horrible. They've been horrible. They need anything to go right now. Now, I know they got a little better when they went to the World Series with Cabrera. I understand that with Verlander, but they ain't finished. My point is they trying to get that engine running again. He's the best manager I've seen in the last four managers they had. If you take out the cheat shit, 
They got to be willing to go through the cheat shit because they, you're going to hear it. A.J. Hinch is going to hear it. He's, they're going to question him every day about that. Yo, what happened with the Astros? Why do you guys did that? He's going to have to deal with that. But if he happens to overcome that, I think they up and coming. The Tigers got a lot of young studs, man. I'm telling you, they got a lot of Dominican cats over there that can rake, man. I'm telling you, I've seen them. If they could somehow get that staff going, the staff is real young, you know, with Mize, et cetera. If they could get that staff going, they're going to be contenders. They're going to play against Cleveland, and they, they're going to play against the White Sox, et cetera. They're going to battle, but they got to get their pitching fixed. But A.J. Hinch, good fit. What else we got? Uh, South side, okay. There you go. I see you, Suzanne. I appreciate that. Okay, guys, keep it coming, man. Keep it coming. Uh, Big Ben, I'm going to tell you what I told Humpty the last show. How you expect me to know what the Mets are going to do when they don't even know what they're going to do? And I'm just going to leave it like that, big bro. It... The Mets are a disarray organization. I would have to say they better than the Knicks organization slightly because they do got players over there. But as far as the brass, et cetera, they don't know what the fuck they doing, just like the Knicks. So I really don't want to get into them. Let's keep it going. What else we got, guys? Okay, I'm about to go to the free picks. We got 13 minutes left. Okay, let's go to the free picks that I'm going to take on. A couple of questions. Big Lou, I see you, baby. And also, guys, before I forget, happy Halloween to everybody. Be careful out there. Dudes is wearing masks. It's a perfect time for them jealous motherfuckers to come get you. So, you know, don't make it easy for them. I'm not saying be scared. We ain't scared motherfuckers. But don't make it easy for nobody is all I'm trying to say. Don't make it easy for them. <laughs> Louis, you like that, right? Okay, let's go to the free picks. Uh, Noah Parker, you know I keep it real on my show, is two and four. Uh, he's actually minus, where I put that at, uh, he's minus 4.8 units. He won his first two games. He hit his slide, but Noah would come back. Y'all know Noah. I know Noah. He'll be back. So for this weekend, there's a big game between the Longhorns and the uh, Oklahoma State Cowboys. And he likes the Texas Longhorns plus three and a half against the Oklahoma State Cowboys. So mark that in. And he also likes uh, Virginia's playing North Carolina. North Carolina's minus seven and a half. He's also taking Virginia plus seven and a half on college football tomorrow. College football tomorrow. So make sure you get, you know, you look at these games and if you like them, you play them. He likes the Longhorns. Plus three and a half in Virginia, plus seven and a half. Keep that in mind. And and for me, um, I'm doing a six point teaser this time, which is equivalent to minus one ten on the offshore accounts and one twenty in your casino. Remember, the seven is one forty and one thirty on the offshore. I don't need the seven on this one because it doesn't make sense to do seven on these specific games. So we're going on Sunday, NFL. We bring in the Tennessee Titans from six and a half down to minus a half. I think coming off that loss against the Steelers, another divisional game. I know the Cincinnati Bengals are playing better every week. They just don't know how to win. And I think it's asking too much for Joe Burrow to play against a real good Tennessee Titan team who lost their first game. I think Tannenhill, Derrick Henry and them are going to have a big day. Whether they cover or not, I think they win the game. That's all I'm trying to do is win the game. On the second part of that teaser, we got to go to Lambeau Field, Aaron Rodgers. they minus six. We're going to bring them to a pick em. Uh, I mean, you know, divisional game. Uh, Minnesota's been playing shitty all year. I expect Minnesota to play their best football. I wouldn't be surprised if the Vikings are winning at halftime because they're going to put out their best football. But I just think Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, they just too much. Jones running out the backfield. they just going to be too much. And, yes, their defense make enough plays. 
Kirk Cousins will make a mistake late. I think either I think Packers will probably win by seven. So two teams, uh, six point teaser, six point teaser, which means if it loses, I don't lose as much with the uh, with the units because it's a cheaper play. You take the Titans down to a minus a half, and the Green Bay Packers to pick them. So those are your picks. You got the Longhorns plus three and a half, Virginia plus seven and a half, teaser, Titans minus a half, Packers money line. Those are your free picks, y'all. I can't break it down more than that. I took it third grade level with y'all. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, we got uh, nine minutes left on the show, guys. Humpty said, uh, net sign, Dan Antoni as the head coach. Bad move opinion. No, he's actually a bench coach, Humpty. He's going to help out Steve Nash. He's not the head coach. He's going to be like an assistant coach. So assistant coach, I ain't got no issues with that. Absolutely no issues. Charles Codera, you better tune in. You missed a lot of this show, bro. You better watch the whole show. We had real good stuff. I was hoping to have you here. What up, Jess? I see you, girl. Um, like I said, guys, any questions you got? Lay them out, man. I'm here for the taking, man. I'm here for the taking. I'm out of topics right now. It's all y'all. Y'all want me to keep talking? I can do that. But I'd rather you guys ask me questions. Keep it coming. Hump, don't worry about it. That's what we're here for. Just like when you said Joe Carter's home run, I had, you know, I had Gibby and I had Reggie Jackson. I had them one and two. No, not one and two no more. Joe Carter's number one. Whenever you hit a grand slam, if I'm correct, was it game six or game seven? Walk off to win the game? That got to be number one, no matter how you break it down. All right, Steve Levine, Appalachian State giving 31 to an over six L.A. Monroe. Uh, Levine, I got no opinion on that. I did not look at that game. If anything, your opinion would be better than mine's. How you like that? Okay, Big Ben, I'm drunk. <laughs> Your show's always awesome. Golden State Warriors, yes. Okay, getting off to the season, and do you predict the season in the NBA? Um, definitely Golden State Warriors, Dub Nation. Oh, they're coming back next year. You better, you, you better believe it. I mean, they got a high draft choice. They still got Allen Wiggins they picked up. Klay Thompson's coming back. Steph Curry's coming back. Draymond Green, they are going to make a run. You better believe Steve Kerr is going to have his lines ready next year. Now, whether they win it or I don't really know because I don't know if – Lakers are big, man. I mean, when you got such a big team like the Lakers – and them also having all this ability to move around. But the Lakers still got to do a lot of stuff. They got to figure out the AD situation. Nobody knows what's going to happen, even though he's still there for one more year, if I'm correct. But that doesn't mean they can't trade him. If they feel any reason that the guy's leaving, oh, they're going to trade him. They ain't going to stay with nothing. Lakers are going to make sure they get something for AD. They gave up about four Young prospects to get them. They're not going to just let them go. I understand they got a championship out of them. But at the same time, business is business. They're going to make sure they get something for them. Okay, Humpty said uh, it was the sixth game when Joe Carter hit that home run of Mitch Williams. A lot of guys don't remember Mitch Williams. He actually had a nickname, uh, a real crazy nickname, the wild thing, if I'm correct. It could have been the wild thing. But, yes, Grand Slam, smoking Joe Carter, who played with the Cleveland Indians and also the San Diego Padres and winded up with the Blue Jays with Roberto Alomar, Dave Winfield, and company as they beat the Philadelphia Phillies with Lenny Dykstra and company. That series was like, every game was like crazy run score. That had to be the most offensive series i ever seen in my life. Keep it going, y'all. Yeah, Steve confirmed the wild thing. Thank you, Steve, for your confirmation. I appreciate that. Okay, guys, so uh, where we at with it, man? Talk to me. Where we at with it? Okay, we're going to close it out. Uh, like I said, um, I appreciate everybody for taking time to spend time with me on a Friday 
when y'all could be doing anything else, man. I mean, Friday is so many shit to do. TGI Friday to everybody. Be careful on Halloween, like I said. Don't make it easy for the enemy. Make it hard for the enemy. Y'all be safe. Y'all hold your heads. I love y'all. And I'm serious when I say that, man, because I ran out of gas two years ago. Y'all keep me going, man. And as long as y'all keep me going, I'm going to give y'all nothing but the raw truth to help you God, man. God bless y'all. Y'all stay safe. Al York Sports, 15 quickest minutes of sports on Tuesday. I'll connect with y'all again. Love, y'all.